All right. Hi and welcome. I'm Caroline Best of the Dove Horsemanship. This is Sabrina, our yes. camera lady actually, and Dash. Dash. And Rebecca's behind the camera today. Thank you, Rebecca. Today's video is on basically the more lazy horse. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it like that because I'm here to kind of evaluate, is this horse lazy or is this horse more shut down? Now I've never worked with, um, let's get out of the way. Yeah. Come here, babe. I've never worked with Dash before, so I don't know anything about this horse and Sabrina's mentioned some things to me. And we, I often get emails and questions. I think, how do you work with a more dominant lazy horse is like the number one issue most people have. And so we're gonna see if this horse is really lazy mm -hmm. and dominant or if she's just still shut down and has some triggers. Right. Give us a little history. How old is she? So Dash is about nine years old. Um, she came to me as a uh, four-year-old. Okay. Um, when she was around two to three years old, the girl that had her before me put her to a trainer that trained her for barrel racing. Mm -hmm. And um, she's a quarter horse. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. a quarter horse. She's out of Dash for Cash. If anybody is familiar with yes. the bloodline. Um, so Dash, when I got her when she was four years old, was a little bit of a loony, so to speak. Mm -hmm. She had no respect, and she just kind of escalated very oh, quickly yes, because that's yes. what they want for the barrel racing get up and go we'll use whatever tactics so right away my my impression is she's got more woe than go she's got a real soft eye and and so unfortunately most people think that they can just make any horse become a barrel racing yes. horse and again we, we were just talking about you know pre-purchase and assessing horses and how you really get to know you need to get to know what this horse is physically and mentally agile you know what what are her bloodlines to me she'd probably be a good cow horse a good reining horse with those bloodlines not a barrel horse um and she doesn't have anyway that's a whole other story so she got um yeah they made her go and so she was pretty hopped up on adrenaline yes. and not very trusting no and so how was she like in the round pen you round penned her Yes, when I started round pending her, she was crazy. Crazy. I, oh yeah, they just crazy. run them to death in here and get them all hopped up. And for the last uh, year and a half, I think now, I've been trying her on your method. So okay. we've been slowing down a mm -hmm. lot. But I feel like there is a part of her that just shuts down mm -hmm. on me. Which um, makes you feel like you're not sure if she's lazy, if she's just, I think she's got a lot of woe. So I'm just going to tell you just by meeting her like that, that I think she does have a lazy um, yes. attribute to her temperament. Yes. More lazy, more ease, actually, more ease, yes. more yes. woe. Absolutely. Now, I did, we take her to Williston up here, which is an arena. And uh, I... For barrel racing. Yeah, and we ran a couple of times and, I mean, she does it beautifully, but she doesn't want to go. Like there is so how does she do it beautifully if she doesn't want to go? Because the turns on the barrels, they don't have to be fast. Yeah. That's just the way she turns them. Is great. Is great. Okay, but getting her to go, getting what does what does she do when go. you ask her to go? She doesn't do anything. She, she just, just doesn't stays, go. She just stays in that certain speed. She doesn't want to go like fast. But so let me ask you, when you ask her initially mm -hmm. to pick up a canner and to go, right? Initially, how does that happen? It's uh when I ask her to go, I have to take, have a little whip by my side, by my side and I ask her, come on, Dash, come on. And then it's like... Takes a lot of encouragement. Yes, so yes, her response she's... time isn't very high. So if you were to compare her response time to Foxy, who I just asked to canter in the previous, it, I mean, Foxy pretty much picked it up like that. She does. So she doesn't. She's probably the horse she got to kick and, oh, let's go, let's go. And it just makes her want to shut down even yes. more. And I... I to me, I feel like she's trying, like she really is trying, but like me, you push me so hard and then mm -hmm. I shut down. Exactly. Horses are very similar. So yeah. I so you've got to figure out that, that, uh, that magic button. Yes. That's pretty much what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> okay. So, Cause this is very common. You guys, how do you, this is like the biggest question. How do you work with a more lazy dominant horse and you don't want to beat them? No. You know, where no, everyone's exactly. telling you to beat them, kick them, beat them, yes. whip them. Okay, I got the magic answers. <laughs> okay, number one, how can I articulate this? Um, the, the biggest thing is being particular, following my method, where we have the execution of one, two, three. 
And one, two, three, first we have to teach the horse. So one, two, three means we have one, two, three, bump. I'm gonna apply pressure and take it away. Okay, and with horses that are more um, quiet, lazy, so to speak, we'll just use the word lazy, doesn't mean she's stubborn, doesn't mean she's not trying, doesn't mean she's willful at all. She's not a willful, mean, stubborn horse. She's just got more woe than go. And that's an easy way to call her lazy. It's no big deal. How many of us are like that? It's no, no big deal. But we need her to get a little more responsive. Yes. Okay, so why don't you step out and I'll show you how I'll do that. And I'm gonna do it in a way where I'm not gonna go through my whole method. This isn't like, you know, three hours worth of work here. We're just gonna, I'm gonna give you the principles and the principles are, I'm gonna be as clear as possible. I think that's gonna be the hard, hardest thing for people, high sweet girls, to be clear. Make sure that you have purpose and intention. And then I'm gonna give her a couple of, you know, warnings and then I'm gonna apply the biggest pressure and just drop it immediately. The problem is, is the feel and timing that people do not have. And so you keep applying the pressure um, and without giving the horse an opportunity to figure it out and develop the response. So the go button's broken, the response button's broken. And when you apply more pressure to a horse like this or a person, you, you can get stubborn, you can get willful, you can shut down. All right, so good girl. She knows this. She's going to come to the middle because she knows this part of the method. Good girl to join me. Good girl. Yeah. So she's already assuming. That's one right there. So guess what? You guys are going to see why I did this. It wasn't personal. It's not about punishing the horse. It's to get her attention, which I have. So that may seem really strong to a lot of you, and perhaps to some of you, you might even call that abusive. But the more you beg and meet this horse on her comfort level, you're not going to get anywhere. So I need her to pay attention to me, number one, and to start listening, number two, and number three, to try. When she walks off, she's assuming, she's checking out, it's not disrespectful. She didn't do anything wrong. She did nothing wrong. But you got to start somewhere. And she's so mellow, the whip didn't even bother her. I would have never done that to a more excitable, reactive horse. I would have done the opposite. So I just really wanted to get her attention. And I only did it one time. I took it away and it's not personal. You can't make this personal because horses feel that intention. They feel that energy. Hi, I got your attention. So what's my first thing I want to teach her? To pay attention to me. Number one, I don't have anything to work with if she ain't paying attention to me. So that was a kick or a bite from a lead mare and I'm the lead mare right now that said, hey, yo, don't walk away from me. I got something to say. I want to talk to you right now. And she's obviously not afraid of the whip, which is excellent. I would never have that approach if the horse was afraid of the whip, never. Good girl, thank you. So I am immediately, because I already know that her response is very dull and she's also very soft in the eye. So she doesn't have a hard checked out eye. She does not. She has a very soft eye. She's not a barrel racing horse. She'll do what you ask, but that's as good as it's gonna get. Just like she wouldn't make any quarter horse racing right now. So what I'm gonna do, because I already know her, how she's operating, what her motivation is, she's just more lazy by nature, I'm gonna one, two, three it. So I backed her up and now I'm gonna ask her to go out at a trot and I'm gonna go one, two, three. That was pretty good, I like that, that was good. If she didn't respond, one, two, three, I would have made contact, okay? That's my one, two, three. But first you guys have got to do a good job assessing the horse and making sure that the horse isn't checked out. She's not checked out. Good girl. So I thought that response time was pretty excellent. Is Does she give you that kind of response time? Sometimes. Okay. So, so that's a good question. So the camera might not pick up your voice. So sometimes she gives you that response time. Not all the time. So to me, that would be consistency on your part. 
being really clear and it's exhausting sometimes because Sundance is one of my favorite horses and Zor, Zor too, because they're also very different and very similar. Zor would probably be the best representation of a really more dominant lazy horse by nature. And, um, and, and look at how good his response is, but it took a long time. It took a long time. Zor was very young, four years of age when I got him and restarted him. And he's 11 today. So it took a long time and I had to, I had, what was working against me and anyone is the maturity level. He's very young at four. And to, so he's really matured at the age of 10. He's 11 now. How old is she? Exactly. So she's just coming to her maturation, her full maturation. Most horses really don't mentally, emotionally, and physically mature until 10. That's most horses. So she's just starting to really get it. But you need consistency. You need to say, hey, every time I bring up this energy like your kids, when no means no. You're being fair. She's got plenty of warning. Here it comes. Bah! Now I'm going to make contact. So I'm going to do that again. And we're going to pause so she doesn't assume that just because we back up, it means to go. And I'm going to bring up the energy. I'm going to be really big right now, you guys. Um, we'll refine as we go along. But you got to be big to make sure you're really clear that this means go. And then the one, two, three, and I'm going to, the whip's going to hit whatever's left here. That's the way it goes with one, two, three. So good girl, one, two, three. And leave it alone. That means, this means go. This will also transfer to your riding, but you might have to attach a dressage whip so that the dressage whip is the same as this. And it doesn't mean she won't buck and say, hey, screw you, don't bite me on the butt. That's okay, be prepared for it. But you've got to fix the button that's And too often, 99% of the time, we just ride this and ride it and we never release and the horse just gets broken down she did she did and so we want to respect her nature it is more lazy you're going to have to or get a new horse because then you're going to break her and you're not but then you're going to break her all you have to learn how to work with this nature and the biggest point is establishing the response time and so i'm giving good girl and this is a big pressure and release topic too i put the pressure on and i immediately took it off because she's going to look at this level from her past history and her nature, she's gonna look for the release. Okay, horses like this are always looking for the easiest way. And she needs that release so that it builds on her being okay with exerting and knowing that you're not gonna abuse it. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Good girl. Good, good, thank you. I'm going to be real consistent, you guys. What are my three things? Consistency, repetition, and reward. And reward comes in many forms. It's not just the release of pressure and her being able to stand here quietly. It's also praise and love and bonding. That's the biggest motivation. I said, good girl. All right. That was just a walk. That was beautiful. Good girl. Now I'm going to ask for the trot. One, two. One, two. Three. Okay, now take it away. So when we get stuck like that, don't chase her. Y'all chase your horses. And a lot of horses, like see Sundance who's really smart. I don't know Dash, but Sundance is brilliant. So she'd make you work real hard to exhaust you. So that's where the prey animal is smart enough to outsmart the predator, me. When you do your one, two, three, don't chase your horse. But you've, everyone has to get comfortable with making contact. And you gotta make sure your horse doesn't take it personal and isn't afraid of it. It's no different than a bite or a kick from another member of the herd that says, hey man, enough's enough. I said, get the hell out of here. Horses are so fair, healthy horses are so fair and have excellent follow through. You're big, then one, two, three, and bam is your follow through. That's your bite or your kick. So you've got to wrap your brain, the person around the intention of this and the purpose of it and the balance of love and leadership. Your leadership is being clear, making sure the horse understands and having follow through and definitely making sure your horse is not afraid of this whip. If it's afraid of this whip, it's either 
came with that fear or you're creating that fear. And so I do a lot of stopping and pausing and rewarding and saying, yeah, I just wanted you to understand that when I get big, you need to match me. You need to meet me. This will make it so much easier when you ride because you're going to still have to get big until you can refine that with more subtle cues. But we got to start somewhere and then we'll refine it. Does that make sense? Yes. That's a cool girl. We're going to do that again. Yeah. Thank you, sweet pea. Oh, it's a good girl. And I'm still going in the same direction, you guys. Still in the same direction. Don't start switching directions till the one direction's going really well. Good girl. And I'm going to ask at the walk and then the trot. Because the trot was like, Ugh. And you see a little bit of ear pinning, a little bit of, eh, you. So you know it's attitude. So so much she's going to get her butt bit every time. And also, I don't know, you know, one of the things I always recommend is if, if she's out in a herd of three. So is she on the bottom? Yes. Yeah. And, and she's probably like, like, that's pretty interesting about Susie too, your new baby that you're getting, is she, she, she don't care. She takes most anything. And she, so yeah, you got another horse with, with more woe. So, be interesting. All right, we're going to ask for a walk. One, two, three. Good girl. That's all. I didn't get as big as... But we got a little ear pinning. We got a little lazy. A little slow. Now I'm going to ask for the trot. One, two, one, two. Very nice. Very nice. The response was good. Attitude's okay. Good girl. Reward. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good. Another big over tracker. But hollow. You gotta work on that. Yeah, oh gosh, yeah. But mentally, she's just a little more resistant. Foxy's a much bigger pleaser. Well, thank you. That good girl. Yeah, thank you. Good girl. Good girl. Good licking chew. Aw, good girl. She's tight. Totally different than Foxy. This is all you neck, all tight in here. She's been like that for a while. She's actually been worse. Yep. And she's, I don't know if tight neck, really tight neck. It's like, I can't get her to relax. So, you're, this is your beginning. You're going to come in here and do it next. And you need to keep her in this. She's going to get really exhausted in this deep sand. So she's going to figure it out faster on how to relax her body so it feels better. So you've got to get to the point, too, that you push past both your comforts in here and say, oh, God, this is killing me. We've been doing this for 10 minutes at the trot, and you're still hollowed out and tight. And the minute she starts to relax, you're going to encourage it. You're going to talk and motivate her. Good girl, good girl, and stop her and bring her in. So in this instance, if it takes 10 minutes of you, of her being heaving and, and sweaty and you going, oh my God, how much longer it's, it's, it, can I do this? The minute she stretches to release that tension, you're going to take her out of the trot and bring her in and tell her good girl. So you've got to reward when she does the right thing for just a stride. So this is back to reward the slightest try and build on it though. Build on it. Does that make sense? So those are two important things with a horse like this. Okay, come on in, Mama. Let's see where your feeling timing is with all this. You're okay, you can leave me. Good girl. And I'll step out. It's all yours. That's okay, this happens. Just chill. Just let her do, let her. She's breathing heavy, so she's stressed out already. Where's your energy? Could you hear that, Rebecca? Her breathing heavy? Yep. Yep. What the hell are you doing to her? I don't know. Uh-huh. I'm usually, but I try to always ground myself with her. So that could have been two things, guys. It could have been Sabrina's, their relationship, and Sabrina's energy. And they have a relationship, so the horse feels like it's, to me, going to be doing something wrong again and disappointing you. Or it could be confusion, because I was leaving, and she was calling her, and she didn't know who to go to. Okay? may not be you may have just been confusion which would mean she's not a very confident learner she's not I can tell you so it may not be you okay. I'm just picking that up because y'all got to pay attention to this stuff so you learn how to read your horse and then know what the hell to do 
All right, Mama, go ahead and back her up, wait, and then send her out at a trot. And keep the pressure on steady with the whip and count the two beat, please. Good, keep pushing her with the whip, please, so you can get a nice rhythmic regular trot and she gets comfortable with that pressure behind her. So don't be afraid. Good, tell her good girl. Tell her good girl. We Re really reward. Now take it away and bring her in. So the key thing with more lazy horses is don't overdo it because response is, is usually the weakest part. Always. That's just who they are. So really reward it verbally and take the pressure off quickly. And they're going to be more opt to give you that because they're looking for that release. Does that make sense? Where a horse that has a high work ethic, oh, they'll, they'll run themselves in the ground for you. They'll work themselves to death for you. You have to be the one to tell them to quit. And that doesn't mean they have more go than woe. That's just a work ethic. So I don't know her bloodlines. I'm familiar with them, but I don't know them. And, and so you, when you are specifically buying a horse with specific bloodlines, you always want to look at the sire and the dam and what they, were, their, what they were really good at, both athletically and their natural temperament and their, uh, their agility. What did they enjoy? So often we buy these talented, well-bred horses and, we, don't, and we, we end up throwing them into something that they don't want to do. They're not good at it. She's bred for barrel racing. That's impossible. Maybe mental? physically, but not mentally. Mental, yes. Well, physically and... So, Sabrina said she's bred, bred for, for barrel racing. Yeah. And who, who said that, though? The girl that I bought her from bred her that way. Okay, but that girl's not an expert. No, she's not. So, see, the yes. Are, like every, when I was... Years ago, it was all dash for cash horses. Yes, I remember. Go, man, go. Uh, she has son from... Because they were winning? Uh... Dash for cash was, yes. But see, this is where you guys got to get more educated. Let's look at a couple factors here. Just because a horse is winning doesn't mean that, that they're naturally athletic well, yeah. or this is what they're good at. Absolutely. How are they? What are they doing to make them win? And this is in any discipline. Absolutely. And Janine knows this with her former um, show horse, Lita. So Lita didn't make the highest show circuit because she didn't have the highest saddle seat movement. But she has a beautiful movement. Holy cow, Janine. And so, so then you get these ignorant people who are just because, well, my horse won. Well, sometimes you win because it's biased and it's political and it's, a, and it's the judge that determines it. You guys want to know how I know that? Because I've written articles on Western pleasure and Western dressage. I've been asked to write articles. I trained with some of the best leading Rainers, Jack Brainerd in the world. And you don't want that peanut rolling nose to the ground. You want a normal level headset when you, and this is back in the day. And so I would ask Jack many years ago when I was studying with him, then how did he get to the pleasure, the Western pleasure where they're all peanut rolling, they're all crooked and their noses, they're training them, yanking them down. He said, because it's political, because somebody decided as a judge that that's what they wanted. And that's the way they trained. And it's very biased. I want to look at the, the original bloodlines. A hundred years ago, you should be able to follow. What was this horse good at? Ranch work. It was great with cows. Steady. Bomb proof. That, oh, and then probably some reigning bloodlines because she's athletic. She's Hancock too, but she goes back. So, but the point, yeah, the point I want to make is don't be, I, don't listen to the buyer. They're going to sell you snake oil for god's sakes you got to look and you got to take responsibility you guys when you have papers to look at the old lines the old blood lines because a lot of people will try and turn these horses into things they're not well, on my, on my path, she when i got her she was not happy she had a i mean her crack was from the you told me about that that's so dangerous was, the crack in her hooves I mean, she had hay, but it was the same yep. hay. So she had dash for cash. I always wanted to Yes, her. yes. But I bought her because... So I'm not saying that we can't restore that zest to go. Remember, Sundance is both Zor and Sundance, who are my most two dominant horses I've ever worked with. 
and also have an extremely lazy streak, um, Sundance is, sh I should have bred her, I would have never. I should have bred her for quarter horse racing. She out races my thoroughbreds all the time. But because Sundance was barrel racing was her first training at the age of two, she hated to go. And she took two years to get the buck out of. I understand. We can restore that go button. And we can restore it and make it so that you're, you're doing it together. And I'm not saying that she won't make a phenomenal barrel racer. I don't know yet. Because I do see a natural tendency for more woe than go. I do see attitude. And that could be, that could be frustration. A little bit like... I don't want to. Why are you making me? Um, it, it's scary. The fact that she's so tight and hollow at the trot, that means, remember, we talked about this earlier in the previous video. Anytime you ask a horse to pick up speed, she has tension. So she does, she's not comfortable with speed. And she's not comfortable with a steady application of pressure at that speed. So that totally tells me about um, former training. And totally, you, you nailed it, Sabrina. You nailed it. So we've got to play with this and we've got to restore her. And, and I think I know for a fact that I hope it makes sense for you, all of you viewing this, that one, two, three, you know, make sure your horse is not afraid of the whip. Um, make sure that, you know, they don't make it personal. You don't make it personal. That one, two, three, boop. Yep, that means go, take it away. You, there's got to be building blocks there. Um, does that help? Yes. Gosh, yes. And the same things you're developing on the ground will transfer to riding. There may be a little bit more stuck because it's a whole nother trigger, of course, but you will have peeled away some of the old and replaced some of the new on through the ground. But you've really got to get this trot to relax. That's the golden nugget right there, people. It's not about riding. It's not about running her. You can't. She's just going to keep shutting down. They all do. You've got to help her enjoy the trot and relax into the trot. And that means you've got to start with these building blocks, getting her to, to go one, two, three, and then good girl, and then pull her back in in a half a circle. And then you're gonna build on that half circle. But the number one thing y'all forget to do is to talk to your horse. You forget to say you're good and I love you. Good girl and I love you. You gotta make that work enjoyable. And I know for a fact, and all of you that, that are here you're my students you know that the horse loves you yes Rebecca in the relationship that's what motivates them to please you because it's natural for horses they're natural pleasers with this horse until I started doing your method yeah like we didn't have that bond I know well, that's amazing her standing here like this but she's not you know to me every and you know this Rebecca and Janine and Sabrina and Holly you're new to, to all of this but y'all know my horses are all open to relationship but they weren't always so just because Foxy is so open and innocent and young they all can get restored to that place again and she has a ways to go there is there is a softness to her but there is a brokenness to her and and you're so intuitive Sabrina she there is a brokenness but we have to pay attention to the fact that naturally she has more woe than go right we have to respect that. And, and so courses are very complicated emotionally. So there's a lot going on here. And figuring out that balance, right? Oh, I do go, girl. All right, mama. I think that's excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'll be back for, we're, we're going to be back with the camera for progress reports. You got homework. Yeah, you got homework. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. May you always be one with your horse. And I look forward to your comments.